Hello and welcome to Character Design by Silva. Today I'm going to give you an introduction as to what this program is going to be all about, what expectations I have of you as the student, and also give you some insight as to how I got started in the industry. Um, first off, Character Design by Silva is a course that I've put together, as you know, a nine-week course, and the whole purpose of this course is not only to give you their fundamentals and introduce you to the art of character design, but also give you the exercises that you can take and work with you forever. And it's using exercises that I use myself today still, and really that's my whole purpose, is to really give you that foundation that you're going to really use for the rest of your life as an artist. So that's really the most important thing. On a weekly basis, what we'll be doing is you'll go to the video assignment, you'll watch the video lesson. After that lesson, you will then have your own assignment. There may be one assignment, there may be two assignments. So during the week, what I would like is for you to do as much work as you can. Because remember, the more work that you do, the more critique I'll be able to give you back once you submit your video back to me. This class is set up as one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you'll be able to leave messages to for me as the instructor if you have any personal questions that you'd like to ask and then I'll be able to cover those questions for you with my video that I send back to you. And so that pretty much covers in a sense what this class is, what it's going to, what we're going to do, we're not to mention we're going to be learning just everything from the process of starting your ideas, figuring out your ideas, thinking about your ideas. Um, constructing your characters, we're going to focus on doing turnarounds, anything that is involved in the production process for you if you'd like to be a character designer in the animation industry, the gaming industry, or whatever it is that you would like to do. Now I'd like to give you an introduction as to my background and how I got started and built up my designs and artwork to become a character designer in the animation industry. Um, when I was growing up, I was never influenced necessarily by the animation industry. I wasn't even too familiar with it. I looked at cartoons a lot, I watched them, but really I was more into the illustrators, such as Rockwell and Ryan Becker and a lot of different cartoonists. So while I was in high school, you know, I drew for my high school newspaper because that's what I love to do. I love to draw. That was one of my favorite things to do. And I knew that I didn't want to be a lawyer, I didn't want to be a doctor, I didn't want to do anything that would um, mean that I couldn't draw as an artist. So when I was in high school, in my senior year, I remember I went to Las Vegas with my family and um, I saw these caricature artists drawing in a hotel. And I was absolutely fascinated. It was something that I had always drawn as caricatures, I just had a um, I guess, a natural inclination to doing it. I just love drawing people. And so once I saw that and saw these guys drawing, all of a sudden it became just a bell went off in my head and said, man, this is what I want to do. So at that point, I uh, once after I graduated, I was in um, junior college, I because that's what I was told I was supposed to do, go to school, get your education, and you'll get a better job and everything else. Um, so as I was in my junior year of college, it was actually a junior college because my grades weren't good enough, um, I was taking some, you know, just different drawing classes. I was taking like a life drawing class. And um, amongst that, I was doing algebra, English, all these subjects really that I didn't like at all. But someone had told me they're looking for a caricature artist at SeaWorld in San Diego. And so I went and applied, and that's where I got my job was drawing characters. They actually were really desperate and needed someone in the seat, and that's where I got my start. And that was one of the greatest starts that I can personally say that I had as an artist into the professional world of drawing. Because now I had to deal with uh, people and clients, and I had to really start to build up my chops as a caricature artist and doing live caricatures. By doing that, I learned a lot about speed, and I learned a lot, I learned about airbrushing, how to color, and so I learned many different things and dealing with pressures of people and also building up a thick skin that would later pay off 
when art directors or anyone else would say they didn't like something, I never took it the wrong way. I didn't take it personally. And that's something that's very important not to do that. So when I was doing caricatures, that everything kind of became a snowball effect. And that's kind of how I look at everything that you're going to do as an artist within this industry. And everything becomes a snowball effect. You'll start something, you'll get involved, and all of a sudden, it'll lead into something else. And then that'll lead into something else. So not everything is going to happen at once. But as long as you have the idea, as long as you have the, the drive to kind of get you to where you want to go, you will get there. You may not know how you're going to achieve that, but it'll come. So one of the things as I was drawing characters that led me into starting my own company, doing caricatures for parties, setting up shopping malls at shopping malls during, during the Christmas season, drawing there. So this is something that just kept, constantly kept progressing. Every year as I made money, from my Christmas year, November and December, the next year I'd have enough money to build a bigger booth and a better booth. And the most important thing was the quality. It's so important to not be so concerned about making money necessarily at that point, but about getting good. Because once you get to the point where your drawings are good, then people are gonna to come to you and want you and ask you to do things. If you're at that level constantly where you're never trying to better yourself, you're always going to be knocking on people's doors and the work's not going to come to you. So it's very important to make sure that you draw and practice as much as you can because that's what's going to help push you to the next level as your drawing um, profession progresses. So once I was drawing caricatures in the theme parks and then I was, and I'd go from theme park to theme park working for different companies, I eventually set up in the shopping malls um, the company, uh, No Fear Clothing Company, had approached me and they were actually looking for an artist. They needed someone, a lot of the people they had just drew in the computer and designed the computer, but they wanted someone who could draw with their hands. So they asked me, hey, please come down. We'd like to see you after the Christmas season. So that's what I did. I went down there with some of my work and they hired me on the spot that day. And for a year, I worked at No Fear having never really used a computer before, never knew how to really use Photoshop, but they trained me as I was there. They showed me every time I had a question, they showed me what to do. So while I was there, I learned how to use Photoshop and how to color and different things. And from that point on, while I was there, my parents had sent me an article about the animation industry. This was back in 97. And I thought, you know, I, you know, this sounds interesting, you know, that seemed to have been a boom and they were looking for artists and different people and it dealt with cartooning and art. And I thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity. Maybe I'd like to, you know, try this. Um, one thing I'd just like to throw in there is that I was always part of networking groups in a sense. I always put myself out there. I like to join cartooning groups. So I was a member of the Southern California Cartoonist Society in San Diego where I was living at the time. And each month we would meet and there'd be a bunch of cartoonists that just got together, um, a lot of professionals, and they'd have guest speakers. And there was a guest speaker there who was a storyboard artist at the time on Freakazoid. And I got to talk with him and showed him some of my work. And he said, hey, this is, you know, some nice stuff. And I thought, oh, great, cool, thanks. And then it wasn't until about a year later that once I got in 97 um, and I had kept in contact with him, um, that I called him up and said, hey, I'd like to show you my work and see how I've developed. And he said, you know, come on down, you know, bring your portfolio. So I drove up to Los Angeles, showed him my portfolio. And at that moment, he said, listen, I'm going to take it upstairs to a production called Hysteria. I think they're looking for a character designer. So I thought, great, this is perfect, you know. And it just so happens that show... It was necessarily, I think it was really, it was timing. You know, they happened that week. They had an opening spot for a character designer. The show was very heavily influenced by caricatures. So they needed someone who could caricature. And that's really what I had in my portfolio. I didn't have any production work. I didn't have turnarounds. I didn't have anything. I just had a lot of my sketches from my sketchbook. And that's something that I had just kind of put together. So I just made photocopies of all my artwork and put it in the, uh, this makeshift portfolio because I didn't know how to put together a portfolio. And we left it with the director and I got a call back that said they might need to take a test. 
So I drove back up to LA, I took the test, and I had to design three characters within the show style. And that's what I did. And they had said, bring it back a couple weeks later. Two weeks later, I brought it back. And, uh, well, it wasn't two weeks later, I'm sorry. It was um, way before that. I think maybe about three to four days later, I showed back up with all my drawings. That showed them that I was serious about this, that I was determined, that I was passionate, and I dropped it off with them. And about a week or so later, I got a call saying they'd like to offer me a job. And that's how I got started in the animation industry at Warner Brothers in 1987. And that led to all the different jobs that I eventually did, which went into getting me hired at Disney um, when I first started out in Kirk's the Animated Series. And then from there, once I had the opportunity to design Kim Possible, and then after that, I went to Nickelodeon um, to do Danny Phantom. So I've had a great experience, you know, within the animation industry. And today, all I can say to you is that I believe how I got there is through my persistence, um, through my passion, through my desire, and through my just drawing all the time. And that is one of the most important things that I'm going to cover and stress a lot through this class is how much you need to observe, how much you need to draw. Is this really what you want to do in life? And if this is what you want to do in life and be an artist and do this and be happy doing it, there's, it can be achieved and you can do it if that's what you want to do. So first off, you must believe in yourself. You must believe in your ability and you must take the time to practice and study as much as you can. So with all that said, that was my introduction as to what the school is gonna be about and what I did as far as getting started. So let's get ready to do some drawing.